Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, unusual and wonderful episode from the Creative Circle Official. Today, we have all gathered here to celebrate the spirit of poetry on the occasion of the launch of Soul Hints. So we'll be telling you more about this. So I'm just going to share my screen. Soul Hymns is a bouquet of poems. In the month of September, the Creative Circle organized a nationwide poetry contest that was intended to bring forth in the public eye, established as well as upcoming poets. The contest received an overwhelming response and the best entries have now been compiled into TCC's first ever anthology, Soul Hymns, a bouquet of Soul Hymns is just not a collection of poems. It's a beautiful celebration of poetry, of emotions, and of the wings of imagination that we all seek to fly off to uncharted horizons. The launch of Soul Hymns is intended to spark off a wave of poetry narrations, appreciation of the journey of poets, and much more. So today, we'll be celebrating some of the talented poets of Soul Hymns, and we'll be getting to know more about their favorite poems, and we'll get to know what they have in store for us, because now we're going to start recitals from the poets of Soul Hymns. The first poet that we have today is Asavari Bhatia. Asavari, or Ash, she calls herself an artist because she believes she's an amalgam of beautiful things. A bi poet and writer from India, you can always find her lost in her own company, but she's always ready to help. She has contributed to over eight poetry anthologies, including Train River Publishing. With a post-graduation in medical microbiology, she is now after her creative call. Asavari, the stage is yours. Please uh, let us know when did your uh, poetic journey begin and uh, what, what would you like to narrate for us too? Okay, so thank you so much, Chitra and hi everyone good evening all so my poetic journey started back in school in class 9th or 10th uh, my english teacher made me write uh, made me wrote poems but after that having a break of uh, i guess two or three years then i re re uh, restarted again writing poetry at midnight summer midnight when i was talking to my best friend so i started online uh, i started writing online in 2018 on Tumblr. So I would say from that, that's where it started actually, my poetry journey. <laughs> okay, so today I'm going to be recite a very, very personal poem uh, for whom I dedicate this poem to. And yeah, it's very pretty personal and kind of intimate. Okay, so I will go and uh, it's untitled. So should I start? Yes, please. Okay, okay, yeah, thank you. I on my knees and you two holding hands together, our eyes transfixed, I to you and you to me, cherishing what we have. Dear, hold on to this and roll with me in the sand, crash the waves, run with the wind, dance around the bonfire, gorging on parathas and chat. Dear, I just want to get closer. Will you accept this love together? Thank you. Wow. That was Your wonderful. Mute. That was beautiful. Thank you. That was beautiful. amazing. <clears throat> Thank you so beautiful much. Beautiful one, Thank you so much. Thank you. Beautiful. So we're going to move to the next poet that we have. That's the second guy. So our next poet is Sambit Das Patnaik. Sambit Das Patnaik loves writing science fiction. His interests are in ancient aliens, historical fantasy, and space travel. 
His writing interest started at a young age. His debut book, The Last War and Other Stories, a collection of science fiction stories, was published in Jan 2020 and is a bestseller. Sambit is also an artist and a hobby photographer. He completed his engineering studies from Nagpur University and a post and a post-graduation in business management from Symbiosis Pune. Sambit is an IT software professional residing with his family in Hyderabad, India. So Sambit, uh, I would like to ask you, uh, how long have you been writing poetry and how does it feel to be a part of Soul Hymns? Yeah. Okay, so I would say I actually wrote my first poetry when I was in school. And uh, I mean, at that time, I think I really started writing some prose and all that. So that was anyway happening, but mostly around thrillers and that kind of stuff. Uh, the kind of stuff that Milaji writes. I love this book, by the way, I just finished that. And uh, so, so, so that kind of uh, stories I used to write. And then uh, surprisingly, I started with something like uh, nature poems. And that was because uh, when in school we used to read about William Wordsworth's uh, daffodils and stuff like that, I was very much inspired by that. So I also got my uh, writing around nature. And at that time, I mean, there was a lot of uh, around environment and all that, right? We used to discuss a lot about environment issues and all that. So the poem was themed around that. That's how it started. But then um, at that time, but then I'm not going to decide about William Wordsworth uh, because th there was a lot of transformation after that, when I got more into reading about mythologies and his, history and also into science fiction. So uh, during school days, when I was reading about WB Yeats, uh, I couldn't make much of sense around that, to be honest. But then later on, when I, could, when I got back to reading more of his work, then I realized, okay, so like, this is something very interesting. So, uh, so that's how, so that's how I started writing poems and that's how I was very much uh, involved with uh, the literature part, having read many other poets also like both Indian and Western. Uh, there are many, many whom I have uh, loved to read their poems, but one that really stood out was uh, W.B. Yeats to me. So I, I, for those who, uh, of course, he's very famous, he got his Nobel Prize somewhere in 1920s for literature. And the, the strange part about him was that he, though he's very much well known about uh, uh, stuff like uh, that he's uh, a poet who, whose background is more of mysticism and uh, uh, mythology, occult and those kind of stuff. But interestingly, he started with very conventional poems in the beginning and he was also writing a, a bit on love poems. But in his initial phase of his life, he had he, he wasn't very successful with love and all. He had a lot of, uh, his personal side wasn't very good. And though people know that he has been writing on mythology based poems later on when he got the awards and all, but a lot of his writing was impacted by his personal life. Okay, so when his first marriage broke, that was the time he wrote a poem. And that's what I'm gonna recite first. I have two poems, both are very short. Uh, and both are from W.B. Yeats. So this one is uh, a, a man young and old. So this is how the poem goes. Uh, a man young and old. My arms are like the twisted thorn and yet their beauty, and yet their beauty lay. The first of all the tribe lay there and did such pleasure take. She who had brought great Hector down and put all Troy to wreck. So if you see, this is where he's trying to relate with his own personal tragedy with what Helen, you know, Helen of Troy, the Greek mythology. So he relates it with that. And that's what really brought down the entire city of Troy. Now, though he, he, he was not, this was time when he was transi transitioning from love to mythology and trying to mix the two, kind of. As years passed, later on, he had a very successful uh, marriage life. And again, because of his personal, uh, I mean, you can say a kind of a balance in life, he got a good partner with whom they experimented on uh, what is called as auto, uh, automatic writing. And that's where they, they would have the spirit calling and uh, they would get a lot of uh, uh, guidance on the complex and esoteric system, which was communicated to them. And they kept writing that on. And that was compiled as a book called as Vision 
All right, but this is more like a lesser known facts of W.B. Yeats. Uh, but uh, as he moved along, that was a time when he got his Nobel Prize also. So he wrote uh, later on, he wrote a lot around mythology and uh, especially on the Greek mythology and even the Irish mythologies because he being an Irish poet. So the second poem is something which came up much later. Uh, this is more of a sonnet. Something around uh, a sonnet, as you mentioned, like 14 lines of uh, a poem like that. So the, the name of the poem is Leda and the Swan. So this is how it goes. Leda and the Swan, a rush, a sudden wheel and hovering still. The bird descends and a frail thighs are pressed by the webbed toes and that all powerful bill mm -hmm. has laid her helpless face upon his breast. How can those terrified vague fingers push mm -hmm. the feathered glory from her loosening thighs? All the stretched bodies laid on the white rush and feels a strange heart beating where it lies. A shudder in the loins engenders there, the broken wall, the burning roof and tower, and Agamemnon dead. Being so caught up, so mastered by the brood blood of the air, did she put on his knowledge with his power before the indifferent beak could let her drop? So this poem is more to do with uh, Leda, who is a mortal lady, all right, and she is forced upon by Zeus, the god in the Greek mythology, in the form of a swan, and he forces her. And that actually results in the birth of uh, Ellen, who then marries uh, Prince Paris and gets in Troy and then this destroys, destroyed, right? So that's the whole story. So I was pretty inspired by that. I just thought I'll share this in this forum. And uh, thank you for so much for giving this opportunity and also creating these kind of atmospheres where we all authors and poets come together and can discuss so much about literature. Thank, thank you. you so much, Kamran. That you. was wonderful. Thank you. So after that wonderful Yes, anybody, anybody, if, if anybody has anything to say about a yes. poem or narration, please do so. Please do you know, so. Don't write it in the chat box. It doesn't come up on YouTube. Please verbalize it. Yes, Samrit, thank, <clears throat> thank you for uh, the explanation that, that went with the poems because uh, these, these poems by great writers, they have so many different uh, interpretations. And especially the first poem that you, you, you said that uh, was inspired from his personal life. It, 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 was, it was quite interesting how he uh, translated his personal experiences into mythology. Thank you, yeah, thank you for the explanations. It's very interesting, actually. And I think the idea of one perspective, but I'm sure that there's so many authors who, have, who would have read him or many other authors, and they will have a different interpretation altogether. Yeah. Well, thank you, Samvay. And uh, after that wonderful recital, the next poet that we have is Shalini Ranjan. So Shalini developed a passion for writing during her teens. Uh, she's an RN science fiction uh, reader herself, and she has a flair for writing stories with a twist. And she's lucky to be married to the man of her dreams whom she met on a train while pursuing her MBA from MICA. She works as a consultant with one of the big fours, and when she's not giving wings to her imagination, she indulges in playing make-believe superheroes, chasing down villains with her two munchkins. If I Hadn't Met You is Shalini's first published book, although she has been writing fiction for more than a decade. Her work has been appreciated in Hindustan Times teens when she used to write uh, as a teen. And she has a huge fan base in indiaforums.com where she writes under the alias of Twister Girl. In recent times, she has been one of the top writers in storymirror.com and momspresser.com. So Shalini, wonderful to have you here. So please tell us about your journey and like, how, when did you start writing poetry? And uh, how does it feel to be a part of school hymns? Thank you, Chitra. Uh, so poetry to me is like uh, the highest form of expression. And uh, I, I think I wrote my first poem in my teenage, teenage times. Uh, and uh, though I have not dabbled much in poetry, I'm very fond of poetry and I uh, often enjoy reading them a lot. So here I would like to recite my uh, favorite go-to poem by Edgar Guest, 
and this was published way back in 1921 and the title is keep going so here it goes when things go wrong as they sometimes will and the road you are trudging seems all uphill when the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to smile but you have to sigh when care is pressing you down a bit rest if you must but don't you quit life is cruel with its twists and turns as every one of us sometimes learns and many a failure turns about when he might have won had he stuck it out don't give up do the pace seem slow you may succeed with another blow often the goal is of the goal is nearer than it seems to a faint and faltering man often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup and he learned too late when the night slipped down how close he was to the golden crown success is failure turned inside out the silver tint of the clouds of doubt and you never can tell how close you are it may be near when it seems afar so stick to the fight when your hardest hit it is when things seem worst that you must not quit okay wow it's nice it's Lovely. wonderful it's I really had, had, motivating actually i had uh, read this poem first time in school it's it's amazing yeah so you have some really like your narrative well. technique i really enjoy it <laughs> yeah i i agree with uh, you know i agree to that uh, shalini the intonation that you use they're really amazing and that uh, makes the poem all the more you know beautiful thank you thank you prabhupad i i would agree to darshan i mean i love the way you narrate the stories as well as your poems thank you sir so after that uh, really touching narration by shalini let's uh, introduce the next poet and that is preeti nayak uh, preeti is a writer poet and author of the upcoming thriller rakshak series book 1 rakshak and the scar roses she is a professionally trained architect and urban designer and she also teaches architecture and humanities at leading institutions a passionate traveler she takes the road less traveled and collects stories from every place In a career spanning over two decades, she has delved deep into histories and stories that create places and cultures. This vast experience inspires her stories with a special affinity towards conspiracies and mysteries. Her debut novel, Rakshak series book one, Rakshak and the Scarlet Roses, is a teenage detective mystery with a dollop of history, conspiracy, and crime. It's available on Amazon on shortly in bookstores near you. She's a devoted fan of authors Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Dame Agatha Christie, Roald Dahl, so many others: Jeffrey Archer, Dan Brown, William Sidney Porter, O. Henry, and J.K. Rowling. So, Preeti, please yes. uh, let yeah. us know. Uh, you know, how does it feel to be a part of Soul Hymns, and uh, why did you choose to contribute a poem to Soul Hymns and? Oh, how long so, have you been writing poems okay uh, so there are three questions i feel absolutely amazing to be a part of soul hymns that is the truth so the second question how did you become a part of uh, soul hymns do you want the truth or uh, do you want me to give you a rehearsed answer so the i'll give you both you can just uh, decide which one is the truth uh, i got scared of niladri so i submitted i uh, kind of <laughs> wrote a poem in uh, 20 minutes flat after getting a phone call uh, a message followed by a phone call where is your poem send it fast <laughs> so i sat down to write and whatever came out i submitted and i told them very sorry but if you don't like it please uh, don't take it that way i was that's why i was shocked to be here and uh, okay otherwise uh, um, i contributed uh, to soul hymns because i wanted of course i wanted to be part of this amazing uh, group of authors and uh, yeah and i got scared of niladri so you can decide which one is the truth so that is the second answer and initially uh, i had submitted my daughter's poem 
I, I, I took her permission and uh, she said, okay, do whatever you want, ma. Don't trouble me. <laughs> I submitted it. So that's what happened. Yeah. And the third one, uh, okay, I started writing poetry first. And I realized I could write when uh, I was 10 years old. And um, all of my essays used to always be read out in class because the teachers were very surprised as to why it was, uh, why they were so interesting. And I was like, okay, maybe, you know, that sort of a thing. But one day I was sitting uh, in the corner bench of my classroom, which uh, uh, has its own reference. Uh, it's an inside thing, you know. So when I was sitting there, it was raining. It was the month of July. And my school had this lush uh, football ground come meadow kind of a thing. I used to call it a meadow, uh, right out of the window. And you could see all the way up to the sea. So I, I grew up in Navi, Mumbai. So that's it. And I looked out and something stirred within me. And uh, we had just started writing with ink pens. So uh, I don't write, I don't like uh, writing on the last page of my book because I think uh, it kind of spoils it. But I took my maths book and uh, I just started writing. I don't know how, but the lines just tumbled out. They came tumbling, 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 and they took the form of a nice poem. I don't have it because I got scared. My mom would scold me and I tore it away. But uh, I do remember that is when I realized, yeah, I can write poetry like it's there in my English textbook. I can write like that. And um, that uh, was my first, uh, what do you say, foray into poems. And I always found poems to be extremely powerful. They... Uh, could just touch your heart with so uh, less words and they had a certain rhythm to it there was a certain beauty to it there was so much meaning and uh, I believe that meaning is very important in anything and there has to be more substance than style so uh, I think poems are that so they they pack in a mean punch in that much aesthetic so that that's that's how that's about poetry and sorry if i digressed uh -huh. <laughs> so what are you going to narrate for us today Priti? okay so i uh, when someone asks me which is my favorite poem uh, i have only one poem uh, which immediately springs to my mind which is ithaka by constantinos uh, kavafis so uh, it it was initially He's a Greek poet and uh, this was written uh, uh, way back, but it holds true because Ithaka is a poem that uh, always reminds us that the journey is more important than the destination. So I begin my classes in humanities or any class that I'm taking in uh, college. I begin it with this poem. I get my students to read it and uh, we kind of, uh, you know, absorb that poem first so that is what i want to read it's a little longish is it okay if i read it yeah sure okay so this is trans uh, translated by edmund keely um and i've just this is a teleprompter thing i've uh, put on so excuse me if it kind of just <clears throat> all right uh later yeah okay as you set out for ithaka Hope your road is a long one, full of adventure, full of discovery. Lestrigonians, Cyclops, angry Poseidon. One second, I'm very sorry, I'll read it again. I don't like this. <laughs> angry Poseidon, don't be a them. You'll never find things like that on your way as long as you keep your thoughts raised high. As long as a rare excitement stirs your spirit and your body. Lestrigonians, Cyclops, Wild Poseidon. You won't encounter them unless you bring them along inside your soul. Unless your soul sets them up in front of you. Hope your road is a long one. Hope 
your road is a long one. May there be many summer mornings when with what pleasure, what joy you enter harbors you're seeing for the first time. One sec. I'm just I'm reading the poetry. I'm, I've just uh, shut that thing out. Of, okay, I'm very sorry, people. Okay, may there be many summer mornings when with what pleasure, what joy you enter harbors you're seeing for the first time. May you stop at Phoenician trading stations to buy fine things, mother of pearl and coral, amber and ebony, sensual perfume of every kind, as many sensual perfumes as you can. And may you visit many Egyptian cities to learn and go on learning from their scholars. Keep Ithaca always in your mind. Arriving there is what you're destined for. But don't hurry the journey at all. Better if it lasts for years. But this is where I put a warning, no. Uh, so you're old by the time you reach the island. Wealthy with all you've gained on the way. Not expecting Ithaka to make you rich. Ithaka gave you the marvelous journey. Without her, you wouldn't have set out. She has nothing left to give you now. And if you find her poor, Ithaka wouldn't have fooled you. Wise, as you would have become so full of experience, you will have understood by then what these Ithakas mean. That's all. Thanks. Over. Yeah, I, I, it's a beautiful poem. Can you please write the poem yes, in the chat so box? Yes, yes, yes. I'll just uh, write it yeah. for you. This is uh, Ithaka. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh. Ithaka by C P. It's kind of poem like uh, printed and post it on your wall. I'm really, really. Yeah, I've it. actually done that. I want. I I wanted to paste it in my children's wall, but um, Arya did not approve of the aesthetics. She likes everything in in a particular order. So this was in cream. She wanted it in grey. So it never got posted. Uh, got, never got uh, pasted on the wall actually. She's there probably. She shut off her camera, embarrassed by her mother. No. <laughs> it reminded well, me she of has to Ulysses. put on her camera because she's going to go next after that wonderful recital by her mom. So let's get introduced to the youngest poet of Soul Hymns. Uh, that is Arya S. Naik. Arya Naik is a student of class 10. She loves to paint, play the piano, study, and generally be in a zen state of mind. Non-negotiable items in her life are cuddles with mom and are of staring into nothing, acidic banters with dad and being torn to her little sister's Jerry. So welcome, Arya. Hi. So how long have you been writing poems and how does it feel to be a part of Solens? Okay, quite honestly, uh, the poem that I submitted was the only poem, not the only poem that I've written, but it's like the one-off poem that I've written. That would be when I was in eighth standard and, you know, I was like an outcast of the class and it was, it was really terrible. So whatever came out, it came out of like, out of me, whatever the way I was feeling. So I, I started writing when I was about five years old. I wanted to, you know, write this really unique poem about space for uh, a poem recitation competition. So, so I did that and I won uh, the special mention only because I had written the poem and it felt really, you know, I was proud of myself to, you know, say my name, I wrote this poem. So uh, yeah, to be a part of this uh, anthology, it's, I, I feel so privileged and I'm so, you know, excited about this, you know, uh, you know, amongst all of you really experienced people who already written and are writing so many stuff. It's it's amazing, honestly. Yeah. And what are you going to narrate for us today? Okay, today I'm going, to, very honestly, I'm going to say ki, uh, I had nothing prepared earlier. I found out the poem that I wanted to read about at 8.55 p.m., not earlier. So uh, yeah, this is The Blank Canvas by Vincent Van Gogh. Here it goes. Just slap anything on when you see a blank canvas staring you in the face like some imbecile. You don't know how paralyzing that is. That stare of a blank canvas is, which says to the painter, you can't do a thing. 
the canvas has an idiotic stare and mesmerizes some painters so much that they turn into idiots themselves. Many painters are afraid in front of the blank canvas, but the blank canvas is afraid of the real passionate painter who dares and who has broken the spell of you can't once and for all. Nice nice Good try. Lovely Thank poem. you, Arya. That was really beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Even I... though it was about painting and painters, it definitely resonates with writers as well. Mm, very true. I agree. Plus I have a special question for Arya. Yeah, yeah. What does it feel like to be published in the same anthology with your mother? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask the same question. <laughs> it, it really felt unreal at first, but you know, standing as an equal to my mom, it, it, it feels as if I've grown up for once. And I'm, I'm really proud of my mom on a little, but I'm, I'm really happy about it. Lovely. <laughs> so. We are also delighted to have a mother-daughter duo in our anthology. This is definitely something to remember <laughs> and cherish. So, moving on. That is the that is the reason I gave Preeti that call. So the next point is it, that is we it have. The first time that this has happened in an anthology, at least. I, I, I well, don't it's know, the but first Preeti... time with us. <laughs> <laughs> because this is a first anthology but yeah this is pretty rare actually I've, I've, I've not seen uh, an anthology where a mother and daughter do are part of the same you know, collection I've not seen that so okay, Chitra let's move on yeah. uh, who's next moving on we have Romit Shavasta. Uh well even back in 2013, when it became apparent that his field of study was science and he had to study thoroughly for medical entrance exams, Romit Shavasta was never able to quite come to an agreement with the fact that he had to stop his writing or his love for arts. Romit, I feel you. During his life in medical college, not only did he ever restrict himself from giving time to himself to write poems and short stories, one of his poems even got published in an anthology of poems. Now in 2021, while he's doing his internship as a doctor in BRD Medical College, after even facing people fighting life and death before his eyes during his COVID duties, he is finally devoting the time that he so yearned to give to his writings. Wonderful, Romit. So Romit, that's quite a journey. I mean, I can relate to that because I'm also a scientist and like, yeah. I was, uh, uh, because everyone thought I was going to go to writing and then I went to science. So, I mean, hmm. those fields really don't go together. <laughs> so, like, be exactly. so uh, how have you managed to balance your writing and your career now? And uh, any future plans for uh, writing poems, short stories? No, actually, I only write like whenever I get some alone time and like I don't usually talk very much. So that's just my go to place. And like even now, after like the next year is totally supposed to be for my PG entrance exams. So even writing anything and giving some time to think about it is feels kind of guilty to towards the, my profession and study part. So that's the whole thing. How does it feel to be a part of Soul Hymns? It's a wonderful thing. Like I've always wanted to be a part of something that's amazing. So yeah, like when I was selected, when my poem was selected, I I was sitting. Uh, there was some cultural activities going on in my college. So uh, that time, I just I was sitting with everyone else, and I just got that email, and I was so excited. <laughs> Great to know that, Romit. And uh, I feel that, you know, Soul Hymns has made us all a family of poets uh, in the truest sense. And uh, we're going to uh, be connected to each other through various events that we're going to interact. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> so what are you going to narrate for us, student Romit? So uh, the piece that I'm going to recite is... Just one second. Uh, so the piece that I'm going to recite is... Uh, I wrote that uh, it's called Newspapers, New Page. 
So uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so uh, I wrote this uh, like back uh, when. Why is someone not letting you hear it? <laughs> It's my sister. <laughs> so, Are you getting uh, a call so, from the ER? No, 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 ma'am. Uh, actually, I'm getting a call from my sister <laughs> right now because uh, I just re recovered from COVID, so my duties are off till today. As Arya, so, every yeah. sister can be annoying sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no comments. <laughs> hey, I am a younger sister. <laughs> I'm the youngest one in the family of four. I have three older sisters. <laughs> so uh, the piece that I'm going to recite is called "Newspapers New Page," and I wrote this back uh, when uh, it was the first lockdown, I guess. And by that time, uh, India took a massive hit as well, like all around the globe. So obviously, a lot of things went wrong. So I had nothing else to do but to write my emotions down to this page, I guess. So here it goes. We live in a time. when news travel faster than the mind can process we live in a time where the outrage subsides and we digress some people died on the streets looking for shelter looking for food forgetting their cries we dived into the communalism of who targeted who doctors and nurses all over the world died to save a few yet some people around the globe were again saving themselves and the curfew at one end of the world freedom of speech proved to be so dire at the other that liberty seems to be choking while it trembles to respire this farago of propaganda by pseudo intellectuals and fraudulent tales must be put to an end or just posting about your agitation on social networking sites and forgetting about it has become the new trend i'm pained with the callousness of people who forgot about the lives our nation lost and can't empathize i'm saddened by the state of journalism in my country who in front of power and money became a new man and failed to sympathize while every shred of my being calls out to me to become something to bring about a change i'm angry at the fact that some amount of avoidable death in a population of billion is nothing more than my newspaper's page that's it. i had goosebumps it's amazing Thanks. that is some brilliant writing yeah. right there introvert and we really Welcome. hope that you continue to write uh, poems i hope that as well <laughs> roman it was written brilliantly and honestly i felt a little bit guilty somewhere because up till very recently i was a part of this very corrupt media and uh, i have indulged in such uh, unethical reporting uh, myself so uh, thank you for saying this especially uh, on republic day when uh, we are supposed to be reminded that we have a responsibility as media representatives uh, as people represent voices so thank you thank you for the poem thank you for uh, making me introspect <laughs> so um the ladri has something to tell So on a lottery, sure. Just go yes. ahead. Am I first of all my network is really dodgy, so am I visible and audible? Yes, you are. Okay. So I think we should announce the winners now. So um, I just wanted to say something before we announce the winners. The fact that we are all part of uh, Sold Hymns, the anthology, means that we all are winners in some way or the other. I mean. being I, the way i look at it is that being part of the you know, book with such amazing writers and poets and creative minds is uh, winning in itself um just that we had decided to choose three winners and it was really difficult so we eventually chose three winners only but we thought that we should also give special mention to three other people who came really close to being winners so even though these are the six top entries but i think all of us in some way or the other you know we are winners we have been part of this anthology we are going to be published together and i think we are all winners right so 
I want before we announce the winners, I want one big round of applause for all of us together. Yeah. Yeah. This, to us. Yeah. this is for all of us. To solve him. If I had a okay. chance, I would probably raise it. <laughs> okay, so I think we should announce the winners. But uh, before I announce the winners, I want to announce the special mentions. The three people who came really close, really, really close to being winners. And they are Preeti, Preeti Nayak. Let's say it for her first. Then it's Neeraj. Keep on clapping, Neeraj, for yourself. And Shashikala, ma'am. So. Congratulations. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and... Now I think we should announce the winners. Yes, please. Suspense music. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> okay, drum so... Drum roll, please. <laughs> yeah, drum rolls. So uh, there is uh, no one, two, three. There are three winners. And... Yeah, in uh, no particular order. So there's all no winners. Order. So they are Lekoni. Lekhoni Acharya. Yay. Then Manjushri, ma'am. And beating her mother, Arya. Congratulations. Congratulations. The toss up was between. Preeti and Arya, and we decided to go for the daughter instead of the mother. Congratulations, guys. Uh, congratulations, congratulations to all winners. Congratulations. congratulations. Wow. Great. So, so, that's so. the winners, the uh, uh, certificates will be given to you very soon. It will also be out on our social media. So, please, everybody, please support that and share that in your Thank feed you. as well. Thank you. Yeah. And congratulations, Lekoni, Arya, and Manjushri, ma'am, and also to Preeti, Neeraj, and Shashigala, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of the service, truly. It, it means a lot to us. It means a lot to me personally. Thank you very much. Thank you too, Niladri. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for the thank special you. mention. <laughs> well, thank you for the opportunity. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I don't think I have uh, participated in something uh, which brings such rich rewards for the amount of time and effort that I put in. So <laughs> this is uh, this is marvelous. And um, uh, you know what it means to be part of Soul Hymns is it's thanks to you coming together and sending out these opportunities that I put pen to paper and I submit something. Uh, otherwise, it's just there in my book you know so um you're offering me a voice so <laughs> uh thank you for that and an unimaginable um um you know encouragement every time or e even just being here being chosen uh it's such a such a high i'm like oh, wow i can do this i'm 52 years old and i'm like wow i can now do this too <laughs> you know it's um thank you so much thank you Congratulations yeah uh, we'd like to hear from you i um i i honestly don't know what to say <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome this is, this is really awesome. It's amazing. Thank, thank you so much for this. This, this, this uh, whole anthology is just so unique. And, you know, you're such lovely people to be amongst. It's, it's amazing. Thank you so much. Great. And you're an inspiration. You truly are. Thank you. So... Moving on, we have our next set of uh, recitals and our next poet is Ira. So Ira is a 25 year old engineer, engineer working in the automotive industry. 
An introvert, she has always found writing as a means to express her feelings and imaginations. Believing that the pen is mightier than a sword, she aspires to write to bring about a change in society. You can follow her on Instagram at Intuitive Write. So, Ira, um, how does it feel to be a part of Soul Hymns? And uh, how long have you been writing poetry for? And so, just let us know about your writing journey, your po poetry journey. We have been seeing that on Instagram a lot. Yeah, so first of all, congratulations, everyone, uh, to all the special mentions on the winners. And uh, so uh, my writing journey was almost as similar as Asavari. Like when my English tutor told to write something for her bulletin board, and uh, I was mm -hmm. like, now, like, I was, my first reaction was, Ki ye kya bol diya? So, <laughs> because uh, till then, I have always thought of poems and uh, English literature as a means to uh, just get marks. Ki whatever the teacher has given, this is the figure of speech, this is this means that, and this is the rhyming scheme. It has this meaning and that. It was just limited to that. So when she told me uh, and others to write something, I took it lightly and I was not even trying to write. So it happened like uh, while I was at home and suddenly light went off. And I was getting bored. So I uh, decided, okay, let's write. And then I started writing poetry and uh, she loved it. My English tutor loved it. And she uh, immediately, she put it on the bulletin board. And at that time I had uh, back to back written three poems. So that is how I uh, like it uh, clicked to me that yes, I can write that English is not just for syllabus. And uh, yeah, so then after a little bit of break not a little bit a long break i uh, you know resumed writing uh, just a means to express my feelings and emotions so i would recite one poem that made me like i i used to take english classes very lightly but this poem caught my attention when it was first uh, you know introduced in the syllabus and all of you must have known it, The Road Not Taken by Robert First. So this, this is the poem that is with me. And uh, whenever I have discussions with anyone who is, you know, we are just a group of uh, people who are trying to figure out a way in, your, in their life. And we have this, like, someone says me, like, I want to pursue art, but I'm stuck in nine to five job. And one thing that uh, just, uh, you know, Nikal Tamuse, it is two roads diverging yellow. So it is the impact of that poem that when that we are so confused, how to, you know, my, between the mind and the heart, how to follow our passion, how to just do. So that poem is so beautiful by Robert Frost to just, uh, you know, like someone has expressed the feelings of the, you know, confusion that happens when one has to decide on what, what type of career do we need to take. So I would like to recite that. Uh, the Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both. And be one traveler, long I stood. And looked down one far, as, as far as I could. To where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other just as fair. And perhaps having a better claim. Because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves, no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. And this last line, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. It point it prompted me to write one line because that line, the last one, was so powerful that it you know, like okay, this was the impact. So yeah, so that is my journey. This is one of my favorite poems, and thank you for reciting it. Yeah, thank you. Then. 
Thank you. I thought it was wonderful. Let's say that robber frauds has changed almost everybody's like life <laughs> in certain ways. Very true. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. It's a very motivating poem. I think as a in school, we also went through this poem. I recall. I mean, this has a very lasting impression. I think on all of us. Yes, I think anybody who reads poetry, I think Frost has touched in some way or the other, some point of time or the other. We all yes. have been. It's very true. Yeah, I have thought about this poem as a teacher. I have taught it at primary level, at middle school level, and then at high school level. Each time, my interpretation and understanding of that poem yeah. has evolved, has changed so much. And uh, I always make it a point to tell, uh, I've always told my students that as you grow older, I'm sure you'll come across this poem again and again, and you will see how your perspective of the poem is changing, your interpretation keeps changing, evolving. You will understand yourself better. What is it that the poet is about to say? He's trying to say this. It's not just uh, about choices in life. It is more than that. Leaving something and accepting something else, which is not much known to anyone, is a tough choice. And that is the point I used to make to my students, that when you come across such a situation in life, think why you want to do differently. Don't do differently because you want to be unique. Think why you want to do it uniquely, differently. So I have always, like, it is one of my favorite poems. I think I always keep quoting this and the other one stopping by the woods on a snow evening by the same quote. Thank you. Aira, that's a beautiful recitation. And honestly, you took my favorite photo poem away. I was about oh. to recite this one, so I'll have to, you know, read out the next photo poem that I have. But thank you, thank you. That was a very nice uh, recitation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm sorry. Hey, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, thank you, Ira, um, for reciting that poem, and you just made me remember my English classes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Ira, and you've got some great, uh, you know, you've evoked all those memories that you had in your childhood. And I think Robert Frost is the first poet that we really relate to. It hits us hard. I mean, okay, this is something that we need to you know, think more about. Great one, Ira. The next poet that we have today with us is Usha Sridhar. She is 56 years old and she lives in Delhi, NCR. She is a professional writer and writes poetry, fiction novels, and short stories. Her debut novel is under print. So welcome, Usha. And hi. we are delighted to have you today. So, hi. Hi. How, hi. how long have you been writing poetry? I mean, tell us something about your poetry journey. If, if you ask me that when you are started, I can say it's all on my late time. I have started writing <laughs> when I... Uh, at the, when you ask me childhood times, uh, I just scribbled something and uh, that that doesn't give some meaningful. Right? When I started uh, doing my MA, MA, uh, MA uh, post graduation, after that I started writing all these things and all things, uh, writing the poems and all was coming into my mind and just writing very fluently I began to write but as my father was also a writer uh, he was writing in in his uh, in, in his local language that is Malayalam they used to I have I have seen him his writing the way he is writing and how he was his imagining uh, imagination uh, imagining how to write and just writing and then that that was uh, from there I felt that I should also write. So after doing my MA and that, I have started writing recently. I, I could say that <laughs> it would be in the past 10 years back, I've started writing all these things. 
This so, is really inspiring, Usha. I mean, for yeah. all of us who think that uh, it's gotten yeah. too late and we're going just writing. Yeah, Even yeah. I whine sometimes like, I am going to be 32. I'm just going to write now. And uh, so, <laughs> so I mean, we have uh, writers with us like Arya and then I'm like, mm. <laughs> so, yeah, but... you're an inspiration because you're, you're not giving up. You're yeah, continuing yeah. to write. You're going to publish your debut book. So yeah. all the best for that. And uh, please let us know what you're going to narrate for us today. So today I'm going to narrate about uh, Kamla Das, which uh, I have read in my MA, <laughs> in MA, <laughs> my grandmother's house, my grandmother's house. It is a poet's nostalgic memories of her place, which she has grown up, grown up at her grandmother's house. So here goes the po poet, poem. Uh, there is a house now far away, far away, where once I received love. That woman died, the house withdrawn into silence, snakes, uh, moved, snakes moved among the books. I was then too young to read and to read and my blood, my blood turned, turned cold like a moon. How often I think of going there to peer through the blind eyes of windows and just listen to the frozen air or to, or in wild despair, pick up a handful of darkness to bring it here, to lie behind my bedroom, bedroom door as like a brooding dog. You cannot believe, darling, can you, that I lived in such a house and was proud and loved. I who have lost my, my way and beg now at stranger's door to receive love, at least in a small change. This is the poem. <laughs> This is the poem she has been doing the writing that uh, where her grandmother's house was so lovely place and uh, she has lost that. And now it, at her uh, married home, married home, she is not getting that much love what, what her grandmother has been receiving. So this is my <laughs> poem. Usha ma'am, thank you so much for reciting Kamala Das. I mean, you can ask Angel every time that I get the opportunity to meet her. The two of us are fawning over Kamala Das. Yeah. yeah, there are two, three, four poems, uh, but it is very long poem. So I've selected small because I thought so many uh, others are going to recite. So I've selected short, short po poem. I I was a little uh, nervous. <laughs> so I was right. But it, it is quite very nice if you read very uh, in nice way. But uh, it's okay. <laughs> just oh, improving. Really just improving. <laughs> Thank you. And I think uh, if I have any female friends, Kamala Das's An Introduction is a book yeah, that I first hand it over to them. Yeah, so you this... need to read this first. So, yeah, she is a feminist also, a very fearless feminist. Whatever she comes uh, in her mind, everything she writes in a very nice way. <laughs> in fact, she had changed her religion. Yeah, yeah. At for last, some time. At last, because at she last. wanted to know what actually is there in Islam. Yeah. So she experimented with her own life. Yeah. No, there and was a belief. There, and then once, she of course came back to the again, became a Hindu later on. But yeah. that is something very, very unusual yeah, yeah. for anyone to do. You yeah. want to know the inside out of a religion. So yeah. she just wanted to know what is it about. Yeah. And and once, that struck me. That really struck me. But that once I, would do that. Yeah, somewhere I have read that she she was uh, she was at uh, touch with a Muslim boy, and he has converted her uh, into in the Mus in this uh, uh, to yeah. Islam. And she 
she was she was in love with that boy she, actually she he was he was a boy and he, he she was uh, telling to her her friend that is some foreign friend that he has betrayed her and that uh, and to make and but he has changed her into an islam but she is staying with that islam only only that that also have came to know but it's also a very in interesting thing to know about her at the, at the last stage at the uh, last time she uh, at the end of the her lifetime she was in islam she was believed in islam but she she was also saying that sri krishna the, she was very devotee of the sri krishna yeah okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah there are a lot of poems uh, where she has mentioned that you know the reference to sri krishna so a lot of poems uh, yeah. it'll yeah. just you will find one poem where she writes hari bol and something uh -huh. like just suddenly and then there's another poem where she writes you know Uh, he he loved her for the last time on that river, and then Sri Krishna lived. So there's a lot of references of Sri Krishna in her poem. So yeah, good yeah. one, Usha. Thank you so much yeah. for deciding our favorite thank poems. You. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So moving on, the next poet that we have with us is uh, Shailesh Shailesh Kumar Tripathi. He's a humor writer uh, with a poetic flair, endeavoring to express the rhythms and rhymes of life. So I have. read some of shalish's work and you know the way he writes satire so shalish welcome and uh, please tell us about you know your journey as a poet and i think you've written so many poems now uh, so please tell us how does it feel to be a part of soul hymns chitra yes uh, unlike others like who have started their poetry at age of like childhood and very early age i didn't write anything till the age of 25 i think i was only writing equations and <laughs> everything so i think traveling changed me a lot by once i traveled for a trek and i saw the nature and i was always a very emotional person so observing things and just emotions and these all expressed in the form of the poetry in short stories and that began my journey of writing yes and uh, and one more thing i wanted to say like chitra said that science and art are not uh, different they are not the same but i differ in that i say like science and art are the same because they are both about an uncovering the truth in a different ways uh, that is <laughs> and uh, i also wanted to recite a uh, poetry which based on robert frost the road not taken uh, one second just uh, actually i wrote this poem uh, inspired by that poem the road not taken because every time i want to change career i read this poem because it gives you an introspection ki that you can actually take a risk and change your life so my poem goes like this it's about a yellow stone on that yellow stone i stood looked as far beyond the horizon i could i have heard myriad disdain dialect and claim yet it all looks the same i do not remember what i wear all those gushing thoughts reappear as i silently observe standing there this experience is sweet serene and rare on my right vast vivacious ocean lay it was quite an extraordinary day nothing is black or white it's all gray like those clouds passing by i detach myself from i so this was uh, one of the poem on road i based on like inspired by that i had one more can i recite like is there a time one second it's about love i wrote i think 3 4 years back uh, let our love be a buffer for life every moment i can rejoice every touch feels twice every smile stays for a while Every time I see you, your beauty is enhanced, one extra mile. For your love is a buffer for life. Extra time is indeed worthwhile. When your eyes drag me, gazing at you all this while. Every time I see you, you look more beautiful. This buffer is a blessing in disguise. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you. I like the second one. Good one, Shelly. That was so adorable. <laughs> Yeah, Salish, I agree with some. You know, the second one was really heart touching. Beautiful man. Yes. 
and finally the someone was very good as well. Okay, thank you. Thank Actually, you. I wrote this. Uh, I published my book few years back. It was one of the poem I wrote. So I today I recollected that and yeah. The first one is philosophical, very philosophical. I felt. Yes, yes, I, I mean, yeah. Actually, I, uh, I attended a workshop on poetry. Uh, that okay. and that there was an assignment that you have to read this poem by Robert Frost and then write mm -hmm. based on that. He mostly connects nature and human in a way that we know that poet does. So I just tried an attempt to. Yes. I felt you are you are a natural poet. What? <laughs> I mean, ne po poem is in you, like. Yes, yes, I love writing poetry. Like yeah, it, like yeah. calms me down. <laughs> I know what Samvit means. It it sort of comes from within him. He's he's uh -huh. very you know casual about it. It's like he's just saying it out of the blue, but it's flowing from him. So I, yes. I get what he means. Yeah. Okay, okay Shailesh, that was wonderful. And moving on, we have Shashikala Ma'am. So Shashikala Gadapalli, a teacher by profession, finds teaching an enriching experience. For her, life has just begun post-retirement. She has embarked upon a new journey to realize those dreams that seemed far-fetched. Her newfound passion, writing, has paved the way for her to explore the unvisited realms of imagination and creativity. Simple, down-to-earth themes trigger her imagination and find expression in poetry and fiction. Words like pearls drop into spaces, coloring them with infinite and strikingly relatable emotions. Her published books are verses of life, till eternity, the absent citizen, the untold sagas, and silent musing. Oh, wow, that was some introduction. I enjoy reading it out, Rajikala Ma. <laughs> this is rather a poetic introduction itself. <laughs> so Thank welcome uh, to this lovely family of uh, poets. And please, uh, you know, let us know I mean, how has the experience of Solims been so far and what are you looking forward to next? Uh, to be very honest, uh, I wrote the poem, it was part of the moment. Uh, I hadn't thought much of it, how to go about it. But that thought about, it, about whatever I have written has been there in my mind for several years, maybe from my school, as, as a student. Something very intriguing, very fascinating, the poem that I have written. And to be a part of Solvin is most unexpected. Most unexpected, and I feel really honored that my poem has been selected. Thank you so much. And regarding my journey as a poet, or as a writer, I would term myself as an accidental poet and accidental writer because I had never ventured into this area at all. Till my 60th year, I have been only a, a teacher, teaching students at all levels. But then post-retirement, it just so happened that I joined one community of writers and uh, just started writing. So my first book that I published, Verses of Life, was in 2020. I started writing in 2019, immediately almost after my retirement. And that is how I turned upon writing as my. I realized writing is my passion only once I started writing. Till then, I wasn't sure about it. It was not there in my eye. Anywhere in my mind. So the poem that I'm going to read out is from my own published book. The title of the uh, book is Silent Music. And the, the title of the poem is Can't Thank Enough. Give up was never in your dictionary. Given the circumstances, it wasn't in your nature. With my inability to learn, they called it dyslexia. My family gave up in exasperation. Your faculties are disabled. They will put you where you are tied to them. Was it my own family who had given up on me? Felt vexed with life, wanted to wriggle into a shell 
And then they came along like an angel a fairy. He, a human with a heart. A heart that emoted, connected, pulsated with my emotions. How easily you identified my needs. And then you showered me with all that was lacking. Love, care, affection, knowledge, skill. I was overwhelmed and felt this. That spark that you ignited boosted my morale. How easy you made learning the joy immeasurable. I just stand on this podium, receiving awards from my exemplary work in the field of science. I swell with pride. I prostrate to the one who made me worthy of this word. Can I ever be to you, man? Thank you, Shashikala, ma'am. I've, you know, read Silent Musings. I really love that book of yours. It, oh, it's a beautiful you. collection. And this one that you recited just now, it's actually one of my favorite poems from that book. Thank oh, you so thank much. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Shashikala, ma'am. That was beautiful. Thank you. And next we have Dr. Manjushri Nair. She's a surgeon, a mother, and a yoga practitioner. She writes poetry, fiction, and nonfiction out of a sense of whimsy and as an offering. Uh, Manjushri, ma'am, we know that there's a lot more to you. So please do share about uh, your journey as a poet and uh, when did you start writing and how are you, you know, enjoying the journey of Soul and Soul. I think the journey of Soul Hymns is very much connected to my journey of uh, being associated with TCC. I cannot uh, express my thanks and my admiration for those who helm it and keep on bringing so many opportunities, this being one of them. Um, I suddenly wrote a poem when I was 15 years old. Um, I had a very slim red um, diary and I started writing poetry. Two years later, I started writing Urdu Shairi of all things. Um, what I write um, always ends up surprising me because um, it's only after I write something that I'm like, huh, okay, now what does this mean? You know, so I'm always surprised with what I write. Um, then I stopped writing for decades and it's only in 2019 uh, that one of my dear friends sent me a beautiful photo from Himalayas. Uh, she lives in the Himalayas. And it was um, a series of tree barks, all of them brown, but one of them was absolutely orange in color because the sun rays had fallen on that tree bark and um, it was just lit a flame. So um, that, that started my journey and I just, I just looked at that picture and I had to write something. Then and there on WhatsApp, I penned a few lines and I wrote to her. And since then it's become a thing between her and I that uh, she sends me photos and then like, are you sending a poem? Mm -hmm. Every once in a while I do. So a lot of my poems are uh, saved in our WhatsApp chat. And um, some of them found their way into, uh, again, um, uh, a happenstance, uh, a slim um, volume of poetry of mine that got published, completely surreal. I uh, answered a poetry um, challenge, thanks to Neeraj, and um, the book got published. Um, I, I still don't know what to do with it, but yeah, it's out there. So um, I'd like to read that poem, the one which I wrote in 2019, if I may. Yes, ma'am, please go ahead. Identity. Reflection of the sun on a tree, like the work of a fairy, caught by a brown bark, an orange flame dark. Perhaps she wanted more of the sun's limitless store. Maybe she sought some attention. Look, not brown, I'm an orange one. So the rays danced across her brightly and she stands there in her beauty. Before the stardust of the night, 
cloaks her in its embrace bright. But tomorrow's another day. She'll find another way to be herself, to be as she wants to be. A fairy she is, mistaken for a tree. Thank you. That was lovely. And your way of narration is so soothing. <laughs> I can yeah. listen to you yeah. all day. Yeah, yeah she will is. you teach me how to narrate a poem? Yeah. Please? Yeah. <laughs> yes, please, please. That sure. Like, like that session. narration was very beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it has a visual I, impact. Yeah. Thank you. The narration. It has a visual impact. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. And uh, Neeraj and me, we have like first-hand experience of listening to Manjushri ma'am because uh, we have these late night sessions where we sort of boost each other to write, write, write. And she, uh, and we discuss on lots of topics or writing Jai Bhadne and we go on, on every topic under the sun. But when Manjushri ma'am, you know, starts speaking, it's like, you know, the days, you know, all the anxiety is gone and we're like, ah. We want to listen. We don't want to write. We don't want to sleep. We don't want to do anything. We just want to listen to her. <laughs> I've got to uh, get my husband to listen to that. I... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So since, uh, you know, I've mentioned Neeraj, he's going to be narrating next. So... Neeraj is a passionate storyteller. He dabbles in poetry when his muse makes his heart flutter with passion, that his emotions pour out in the form of rhymes. Apart from his core passion for literature and performance arts, he also gives, us, gives out free legal advice to those who risk listening to him and writes nonfiction when no one wants to listen to his geeky blabbering. <laughs> Welcome, Neeraj, to Soul Him. Please let Again, us know. an introduction. I really enjoyed. <laughs> I enjoyed this introduction. Uh, knowing about him is a, like <laughs> I can't explain. Thank you, Neeraj. So, uh, when did you start writing poetry, and how, uh, you know how did you come to submit your poem to Soul Hymns, and how's the journey going on so far? <clears throat> okay, so. Uh... Poetry, I have always been uh, writing stories since I was a kid, but poetry came to me very late, uh, primarily because my father was a, a poet himself. He is he, an award-winning poet and his uh, poetry has been recited over AIR, uh, All India Radio. All India Radio. Uh, and to be honest, that uh, scared me so much because he is such exceptional a uh, poet that to to match his level was uh, kind of it, it always felt impossible and so i really never tried writing poetry as a kid uh, but because he 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 was a poet he used to make me pay a lot of attention to the lyrics of good songs to he, he made me read a lot of poetry um, and uh, I, I wrote my first poem out of necessity, uh, honestly. I was, I was doing this play in uh, college, college, junior college, uh, and there was this scene uh, wherein uh, the playwright and the director wanted uh, <clears throat> something poetic uh, in the form of, form of dialogues. And the playwright himself was, wasn't able to write anything in the poetic form because he, he wasn't a poetic, poetic writer. Uh, and because I was the protagonist in the play, uh, I was uh, given the responsibility of coming up with something poetic for the scene. <laughs> um, and that, that is how uh, my first poetry somehow came out of me. And I realized that it's a little bit of a Yeah, and uh, to be honest, uh, when, I, when I did my MA in literature, uh, I was once again... Uh, extremely afraid of writing poetry because uh, especially when I when I uh, read uh, some philosophical essays and poetic essays by Edgar Allan Poe and when I read uh, Poetics uh, of Aristotle, I once again started feeling that I am absolutely terrible at writing poetry and what I do is not poetry to begin with. <laughs> I cannot even call it poetry. 
because it, it, my, my poetry does not have this structure, it does not have rhyme, it कुछ है ही नहीं उसमें पोएट्री क्वालिफाई होने से बहुत बहुत लगता था सो दैट इज व्हाई आई एम वेरी थैंकफुल टू द क्रिएटिव सर्कल फॉर सो गिव्स बिकॉज़ दिस एटलीस्ट गेव मी अ काइंड ऑफ अ फाइटिंग चांस टू सबमिट समथिंग इट गेव मी दिस कॉन्फिडेंस दैट ओके आई आई कैन एटलीस्ट सबमिट समथिंग एंड ऐसे मार के देखते हैं लगा तो लगा and uh you got so, a special yeah. mention <laughs> yeah i know right i i am as surprised as you are <laughs> uh, uh so thank you thank you so much uh for believing in me when i clearly do not <laughs> uh okay so uh this poem uh and i'll first recite the poem and then i'll uh, tell you where this came out of because uh, it would I'll probably give it away it is by you your poem yes yes it's it's my uh, original okay. poem <clears throat> okay, so uh, so the title is i can never take a bad picture i can never take a bad picture i would always say i can never take a bad picture i would always say because no sensor was ever equipped sensor is vocabulary ke andar hai na no sensor is ever equipped to pierce through my smiling face the face like a veil i wore a veil to hide my true self the shutter no matter the shutter no matter at what speed it clicked was always incapable of capturing my depression filled micro expressions the flash the flash oh so bright could never expose the holes in my soul the very same holes through which i would ooze my darkness out having captured a perf- a picture perfect exterior the electronic device shall fool generations having captured a picture perfect exterior the electronic device shall fool generations into believing that their old man died a happy death but the truth lies naked before me now piercing through my perfect picture as i finally escape my life long prison the prison which now lies in the coffin before me absolutely oh my god god that was so evocative wow and you said you are not uh, for poetry i, I won't <laughs> I was <laughs> taken aback when you it said won't. that the happy man died. <laughs> when um when the old man died a happy ending, I was like pushed back. Wow. Neera, Neera that was really beautiful. Huh? Uh, no, not no. I haven't published this. This actually uh, okay. So uh, this poem I kind of wrote uh, out of a prompt. I, I, I'm a part of this uh, poetry circle kind of thing. and uh, we were given a prompt of something photo or picture or something like that and this this just came to me because at that time uh, i i i was uh, seeing a lot of death around me as i as i mentioned i i worked as a reporter during the covid times and there was a few fa- deaths in my family and uh, we used to write about deaths every single day uh, and uh, It, 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 i i was kind of numbed at that time to all the pain and to all the deaths because after after you write about so many died so many uh uh succumbed and after after, after you literally watched piles of bodies being thrown into ambulances uh it it numbs you it does not hurt you it does not uh it it basically makes you feel absolutely indifferent uh and and i guess this this uh, poem was kind of my heart's way of making me uh, feel something once again so yeah uh yeah to aisa kabhi kabhar kuch na kuch rhyme mein nikal jata hai nahi to otherwise i am not a very good poet nahi <laughs> neera honestly this was uh, really beautiful it was wonderful to hear and i could relate to this one a lot you know uh, i have to smile as well a lot many times and uh, it's like a veil over my face so i understand and i relate 
secondly there's one uh, suggestion i hope you don't take it otherwise you should try uh, writing rap as well you know while you were reciting the poem i uh, listened to linkin park a lot that's uh, one of my favorite bands and uh, you know i could feel a touch of that rap coming from you so you should oh, try that I'll just a suggestion try it out thank you thank you so much never really thought about that great neeraj and uh, a new sort of opportunity has presented itself please do try rapping and uh, if you do come up with something please just send it to me i mean we'd love to right he's it. also a good storyteller also <laughs> nice to be telling thank you <laughs> instagram is full of his storytelling <laughs> i usually watch it <laughs> Very nice. And he's about. also giving out writing tips, so please do go and follow. Ah, yeah, yeah. 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 So he's keeps doing this and this and this. this. Yeah. Real, <laughs> real expert. And my Insta has a bug where wherever I point, the text is not coming. There, the text is coming somewhere. <laughs> okay, moving on. So we have next with us, Prabhupad Mishra. Uh, Prabhupad Mishra is a writer and a banker based in Bhubaneswar, Odisha. Uh, same city as me. He loves playing cricket and football with kids, and can often be found taking an early morning walk in the park. He also loves feeding and looking after the stray dogs of his colony, and believes in spreading positive vibes everywhere he goes. A good example of that would be his workplace, which is always brimming with positive energy. He believes that if you help out another human in need, then the universe will conspire to bring all the happiness of the world to you. He has lived his life this principle and derives extreme joy from it. To add to that. uh his book uh that's a romantic poetry collection it also has you know heart touching stories the tapestry of life cadences it's uh, trending on amazon and it's a best seller so prabhupad so please do uh you know tell us about your journey as a poet and uh, why do you write poetry and uh, what are you looking forward to in soul hymns Thank you, thank you, Chitra, for uh, the beautiful introduction, and uh, thank you, Niladri Chitra, and the entire TCC team for this uh, wonderful concept called Soul Hymns. And uh, you know, honestly, I never thought I would be a part of this anthology uh, because I, I, that poem it was uh, abruptly. Niladri had to, uh, you know, approach me uh, quite a few times. Ki, why are you not submitting? Why are you not submitting? And uh, it was written uh, in the last moment. and i remember uh, me and niladri we had a little conversation about you know pets and uh, dogs we have had in the past so that's what uh, you know motivated this poem uh, my last pet uh, we lost uh, him in 2018 so uh, this was uh, a poem written for him and uh, as far as poetry writing is concerned i am not a you know i always keep so, saying that i am not a writer i'm not a professional writer and uh, you know that applies to poetry as well uh, i just write out of my heart and uh, usually you would find my pieces uh, you know uh, it would feel like some child has written those pieces uh, so uh, that's that's uh, about poetry and uh, but but this is a great platform and i thank you uh, pcc for making me a part of uh, soul hymns that's really honorable uh, you know uh, being a part of a book uh, where we have so many established writers uh okay, coming to the poem that i'll be reciting i i wanted to recite uh, the road not taken by robert frost but uh, that's already been read twice so uh, my second go to poem is uh, invictus it was written by william ernest henley and uh, this is uh, a poem that's very close to my heart and uh, every time i feel low i i try and read this poem and some other pieces that i have in stock in my diary but this is a poem you know that uh, always helps me uh, get up you know it's inevitable that we fall many times in life uh, we get punched down and uh, but, but it's more all the time more important uh, that we get up so this is a poem that guides me to do so so here it goes invictus is the title of the poem out of the night that covers me black as the pit from pole to pole i thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul in the fell clutch of circumstance i have not winced nor cried out aloud under the bludgeonings of chance my head is bloody but unbowed 
beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid it matters not how straight the gate how charged with punishments the scroll i am the master of my fate i am the captain of my soul so uh, you know i this is the, this is the poem and i really love the last stanza you know it uh, uh, ends with i am the master of my fate and i am the captain of my soul so for uh, anyone uh, this is what applies in life that uh, you are the master of your fate you are the uh, master of your soul no one else nothing else matters you are bound to get up so thank you lovely i love uh, your narration yes and that poem is one of my favorite the last two lines are um of one of the two couplets that form the the headlights of my journey you know that and to thy own self be true because i read both these two lines and to thy own self be true when i was in my teens and it was like yes this is how to be you know never forgot it so thank you for that beautiful thank you ma'am that, that was wonderful narration and this is a very inspiring poem i think we i mean i also recall reading it earlier and thanks for bringing it back, back again i mean i could revive those uh, lines with you again thank you so much and and just to uh, i'm reading this reading a book right now and uh, and let me tell everyone of you like uh, uh, he's written many number of stories in that is a collection of stories each of them are short in those few lines it could just be a one pager or a one para story in those few lines he says a lot and left leaves many things unsaid so it's beautiful i mean uh, uh what is it it's truly is uh, deserves a best seller thank you for sharing your stories in your book also but thank you sambit uh prabhu ji thank you so much for this poem i actually needed to hear this and uh, i i i would actually like to go back to your intro uh it is such a wonderful value to live by to do something good for someone else uh thank you for that as well because uh, I, i i mean that that's a value that uh, i think i need to inculcate as well i really loved 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 that line and the way you put it thank you neeraj and you know thank the you background words. of the poet i'm so sorry he wrote this poem when he was on his deathbed he died of uh, tuberculosis when he was very young i believe in his 20s and that's when he wrote this poem so the spirit of the man shines brighter than the cage that it's in definitely thank you so much thank you so much prabhupad for this poem this is extremely special to me and uh, i would say this uh, ranks amongst my uh, favorite poetry too because this is the poem that uh, gave me strength when i was fighting cancer so uh, thank you this uh, is a very 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 special poem for me thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you prabhupad ji and uh, moving on lekhoni you are up next so lekhoni acharya hailing from kolkata is currently based in calgary canada she has completed her masters in literature from symbiosis college of arts and commerce she has been writing since the age of 12 and previously has pu- published her work in the college magazine she is also part of an amazon published book called word not She has written short stories and a series of poems about a serial killer. Interesting. She is a nature lover, enjoys the rain and reading when not at work, can analyze films like a professional critic and takes pride in knowing how to play chess and compose songs in Hindi and English. So, Lekhoni, welcome to this event and we are so delighted to have you. You're one of the winners also. Uh, please let us know about your journey as a poet and... Uh, uh how you came by soul hymns and why you decided you to submit your poem here and also how does it feel to be a winner of soul hymns <laughs> no <laughs> it actually took me uh like when i when you guys uh, announced i was like 
okay, I thought it's not that great. Okay, fine, maybe it's it, 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 it like, you know, because I was in, uh, like, I was actually fighting with my editor that this is not that great. This is not that great. I cannot publish this one uh, or, you know, send out this one. And, and she was like, no, it is good. It is good. Just trust you. Trust yourself. It is good. It, it's not that bad. So, yeah, I thank my editor for that. Uh, when I came about my journey as a poet, so being a Bengali and uh, being coming from Kolkata, like this is like a tradition to uh, learn uh, or listen to Ravinder Shumgit and <laughs> anything which uh, is related to Ravinder Shumgit. <laughs> so. Uh, my mom, I, I remember my mom, uh, like, you know, singing Ravinder Shum Shum Git, uh every Poti uh, or like in, on his birthday or on our like New Year, the Bengali New Year or and during the Sarah, it's like this, that's a kind of a normal thing for me. So poet, poems, uh, reading poems or uh, reading uh, like good poems is always a very normal thing. But what made me write is uh, his um uh, it's it is in bengali and i'm so sorry i could not find the english translation uh, it's called jokhon porve na mor pai chinno ei pate so it, it basically means when my footprints will not fall on this path anymore it's about uh, death, like even after I die, how things will go on and you guys will remember, maybe not remember me. So that's something which like is still in me. And uh, I was uh, like invoked by that particular song or poem of uh, Ramindranath Tagore and uh, that made me write first time when I was in 12th grade. Uh, no, when I was 12 years old. Uh, another, because I knew that I cannot, uh, like that, that's a Bengali version and I'm sure no, not everybody will understand Bengali. So I thought of another poem and talking about another time of my life, which was not that great. So when I came to Canada uh, after, there was like lots of responsibilities on, on me uh, about, you know, uh, find a proper job, uh, get settled. Uh, mm -hmm. Because when I was in India, I was like, yeah, this is my own country. I, I, I can do whatever I want. But when you come to a different country, there are certain things that you have to do and there's there's no time for sometimes you have to kill your passion and store it in a chest or something like that. So uh, the poem of uh, Robert Frost, <laughs> uh, Stopping my words on a snowing evening. It kind of was like, you know, it, I, I could relate a lot with it. So especially, uh, those words where he's saying the words are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. Those were like, okay, I know poetry, story writing, literature, it's beautiful, it's intoxicating, it will, like, it punches me uh, in certain places where I cannot feel, I never thought that I could feel. So, but... I have some irresponsibilities in my life that I have to, you know, meet. So, and I have a lot of long way to go. So I'll come back maybe someday, but not right now. So that's what I told myself again and again. So that was the time when I was, I could relate a lot. And then uh, I saw soul hymns and uh, it gave me the opportunity to love myself again. Uh, poetry for me is, like I say, uh, it's kind of a way of uh, communicating with my own self. Like when we are in this world, especially I'm, I am in a capitalist country and 
let me tell you, it's not that great sometimes. Sometimes you have to, you know, kill your inner passion. Uh, so you become someone who you are not. You, you pretend so much that you just forget who you actually are. And then you, be, you become a completely a different person. So poetry is a way or a medium of communication for me that this, so that is how I communicate with myself. So, yeah. So uh, are you going to narrate your own poem today or uh, something else? I can per narrate one of my own, my own poem. Okay. Um, I don't know how much all of you guys can relate, but I can relate with this one a lot. So um, here it goes. Dear lone girl, walking in the middle of the night, making a cup of hot chocolate to soothe your heart, embracing the warm throw around you to avoid the chilly wind of September dawn, walking on the ice cold floor of your soul own apartment, who are you waiting for by the window sipping the hot chocolate? Dear lone girl in the apartment, has nobody made you the dream catcher? Instead of what you want, thought of giving you what you need. Who are you wait? Who are you looking for in the vacant chair right opposite to yours? Dear lone girl, why do you choose being alone? Why choose to wait, anticipating for love, a love which cannot meet its destiny, a longing which you see no end to, a longing tangled like the flowers in your curls. Lone girl does nobody think about bringing you back from the nightmare. Would your long walk in this endless tunnel be over someday? Who are you waiting for at this unnamed bus stop? The flicker of lighter, the drag of a burning cigarette, the fuzzy curled up cat by your side smokes from the teacup, sleepless eyes and a cold bed are longing, are longing for his arrival. Lone girl, would you get the bus you have been waiting for? Would you finally make the dream catcher for yourself or would your neighbors hear the ricochet of bullet in the middle of the night? Lekoni, I think the silence that you just received means so, so much. Okay. I was like, was it not audible to people? I'm speechless. I'm literally telling you. Lekoni, it's... Yeah, actually, yeah. Lekoni, no the words. Silence was that the silence was because I think everybody was absorbing what you just narrated. It was really, really good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was great. We'd like to hear more from you sometime. Yeah, sometime I would like, you know, when we have our own dancing sessions. After the... <laughs> All those who are watching this, we are going to start our own dancing and you'll have to tolerate that. We'll be yeah. of course, featuring it on the YouTube because we'll be having so much of fun. So, Apparently, Lekhoni, uh, when we asked her to do videos and, you know, narrate and she was like, I can't do this. And I'm like, OK, you're a dancer. Can you dance? And she was like, yes, I can dance. So I'm like, yeah, we should jam something that way. <laughs> so we'll yeah, have because, yeah, because I have like, I know dancing and singing. That's a very normal thing. You, you ask me to come sit in front of the camera and talk about myself. OK, that is bad. <laughs> I don't know. I like that. Okay, Chitra, let's uh, move on to the next person. Yes. I think we have only the a few next left. The poet is Angel Nair. Angel is a law graduate from Pune with a deep love for art, words, and literature. She has been an avid reader, which she believes is a source of her passion for writing. Angel has also taken part in a few story writing competitions, one of which was the Laurian Hemingway Competition of Britain, wherein her short story had been presented as an honorary mention. In her free time, she can be found tucked away in a cozy corner with a book in hand and enjoying some music. 
Hi guys, am I audible? Hi Angel. <laughs> so how are you? Um, and, okay. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sick, but yeah, I'll be fine. <laughs> yes. So, so I, you... yeah. <laughs> are you enjoying your journey as a poet? I mean, in soul hands. And uh, when did you actually start writing poems? Okay, so uh, I have been writing since... Uh, I was very little and um, I've always had a dream of getting my own book published and now I am working towards it and it is going to be a compilation of my poems. So I'm quite excited for that. Nice. <laughs> yes, awesome. I absolutely love poetry because, um, yeah, reading, like I said, uh, The Road Not Taken is one of my favorite poems. Uh, and I first studied it in when I was in the seventh grade. And the way my teacher explained it to me, like, you know, for, to the class, it stayed with me and it is still with me. So I absolutely love it. So today I'm going to narrate, uh, I would like to grab the opportunity and narrate two, but let's see, like, they're long ones. So, okay, for the first one, um, I was walking down a crowded street that once was decorated with lights of dreams and hopes. Joy and ecstasy were like chandeliers suspended on ropes. Then I heard the mysterious flick of a switch. Lights dimmed out and the street was filled with shadows of doubt. At a shop along the pathway, I stopped to see a soul waving at me. Although it was trapped inside a mannequin, it longed to be set free. I couldn't help but notice the restless yet tired soul covered in bruises and wounds. And while the mannequin continued to helplessly pick at its scabs, it also wished for the pain to be subdued. Right where the wounds on the mannequin were, I saw scars on myself, hurting and bleeding, until I realized that all this while, I was looking at a glass door in delusion and staring at my own reflection. Yeah. Wow. Very nice. Wow. Nice. Wow. wow. Very nice. <laughs> This actually, this, well actually reminds, this actually reminds me of a poem that I had written where this person was looking at his own reflection and was not understanding who it was. Okay. Yeah. yeah that was I... beautiful, Angel. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Great Thank narration you so. as well. Uh, very nice. <laughs> a profound one. Very. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Or oh. Every word was very clear and, <laughs> and can understand. Thank Can you so much. <laughs> Very nice. Can I read my second one like quickly? Yes, please, please do. Yes, okay. So, written in blood, my battles of every day. Eyes are heavy, limbs numb, and nights are rough. When nightmares no more scare. I wonder, I wonder, where should I travel? Vagabond mind in me, escaping only in thoughts. Wearing my scars proudly, souvenirs of my victories. Running away from the fear of defeat, learning to win battles, running towards the destination, never felt so dreary. Even if the soul gets exhausted and eyes get dirty, there I will be having the last laugh after making life chase me like a tide. No more the fear to drown, standing there wearing the victor's crown. Very nice. Wow. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let me ask, what did you eat today? <laughs> <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> the words were so clear, so clear. Angel, that... your last one, I would say I could relate a lot. Sometimes, like, I really, it, it's really nice. You should, in your, uh, you know, in your ongoing process of publishing, you please put this one. <laughs> yes, it is going to be included. Thank you so much, Lee Kuen. Thank you, everyone. Okay, Chitra, who's the, who's next? You tell me. Wow, Could you please was... read out my intro? <laughs> I was waiting for that one. <laughs> okay, so... Chitra Padmana is the author of best-selling books like Slaying the Blues, The Amazon Pen to Publish Contest, Right Fluence uh, Author Award, CLA Global Award-winning novel, Linga When You're Gone, as well as co-author of several anthologies. She's a scientist, a trained classical dancer, 
and has won over 40 awards at the state and national level for his for her varied literary activities such as writing and directing plays storytelling essay writing and debates two gold medals five research fellowships and 13 acclaimed research publications later she continues to write whenever opportunities present themselves that's one big bag of accomplishments by the way i want yeah, to include i want to, call you I want to include professional goofball but i should have included it like such a bhari bharkam intro to tigers for me <laughs> it feels great to have conceptualized it in the first place <laughs> and then be a part of it of course um so i i would like to mention here i mean everyone has been mentioning the one person who got them into soul hymns so i would like to mention uh, niladri and uh, like uh, we call him gabbar so priti and me have conversations where we have call him gabbar so he apparently pulls everyone to poetry and you know write poems and uh, that's how i have also rediscovered my love for poetry so uh, the first the very first poem that i ever read was uh, echoing green by william blake so i remember i was sprawled on the bed and this was big book of poems that my grandmom handed to me and i was just reading and that was the first poem in it I'm not going to narrate it today, but uh, yeah. So that was my first introduction uh, to poetry, and uh, then many years later, I found out uh, that some astrologer had uh, predicted uh, in my horoscope charts that she's either going to go towards chemical sciences or she's going to become a poet. So I am, I have uh, successfully fulfilled uh, that prophecy. So <laughs> I'm both into chemistry as well as into poetry. Uh, so yeah. So I've recently started writing poetry again. It was just last year, and uh, in two decades I'd just been scribbling this and that in journals. It never found any shape, but last year I was really inspired to write more and more. Uh, I still do not consider myself as you know a good poet or a great poet, but I do enjoy writing them. Uh, so the first uh, I have two poems. That should, I want to that should be the main reason. we should write for ourselves <laughs> so uh, i don't really know what to na uh, narrate i really wanted to narrate one of my own poems but uh, let's see uh so the first poem that i'm going to narrate uh, today is hiki okay so uh, so here it goes who would have thought it was so tricky to lie and to hide an itsy bitsy hiki It's hot and thirsty. My neck feels sticky. I yes. wince at the throb from the angry hickey as I silently agree. How never have I felt so damn icky. I voice it aloud and hear a shout, but don't see the slap until it hits along with the jibe that rhymingly fits. You don't get to be this finicky over such an itsy bitsy hickey. There's no strength. left for a fight my stomach roils thinking of yesterday night the fat rules of cash the handcuffs and the lash the games and the drug dreams the chains and the subdued screams and yet they think i am being picky over and it's a bit see hickey what they don't know is that it's not just one but so many shaped like his snail tattooing me captive in a cage of helpless fear no longer a relic of a lover quirky my spot of shame once my ticket to fame mark of the man who brought me into the city who could have thought it could be more than just an itsy bitsy hickey oh my god it turned dark so soon and that was a thriller in a poem yaar yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, Chitra has sent me this poem saying that uh, 
ऐसे ही लिख दिया इज नॉट दैट ग्रेट आई सेड इट इज एब्सोल्युटली अमेजिंग व्हाट यू आर सेइंग इज नॉट ग्रेट एंड दिस लेडी क्लेम्स टू नॉट बी अ ग्रेट पोएट Thank you. Yeah, to it's very humble of you to say that you're not a great poet, huh? This, this was really outstanding. Thank you so much. Tongue twisting. <laughs> <laughs> Tongue twisting. It's a bit. I remember uh, sending it to Nilagri, and he was like, "Oh, who could have thought? It's an itsy bitsy hickey." Oh, I'm enjoying this, and then it got okay. <laughs> I know it, it literally <laughs> happened to me. It was like okay, ये बहुत cute है मस्त है and oh my god, it's so dark. Yeah, but knowing Chitra, I knew कुछ तो आने वाला है पीछे. I was waiting for it. <laughs> it's not, it's not an itsy bitsy कुछ तो है. Yeah, it's not an itsy bitsy. <laughs> um. Okay. So then, yeah. Do you still have the number for that astrologer? <laughs> लैंग्वेजी Okay, so it means uh, the one who gets instantaneously angry, and my parents quote that to me at every. <laughs> well, uh, well, I just, I just want to say something. The astrologer was absolutely bang on target. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to be looking right at you now. <laughs> I would actually. Priti, because... Priti, I am not. I am not the real gubber. Okay, I am just the <laughs> face. The real gubber is someone else. You don't know it yet. No, T. He is like the Batman builder. You have seen? Has anyone seen Batman Begins, where Ra's al Ghul was a complete different person? Yep. Yep. Well, that's what it is. Okay, so, moving on. Before before I get beaten up, I have another uh, poem to read. Yeah, please, please. And this oh, one is from Kamla. Go? Okay, please go. And this is one from uh, Kamla Das. Uh, not a very long poem, but still, I wanted to uh, recite this because uh, this sort of showcases uh, the desperate uh, nature of a poet, and uh, I think she has brought it out quite beautifully here. So this is uh, titled "Forest Fire." Of late. i have begun to feel a hunger to take in with greed like a forest fire that consumes and with each killing gains a wilder brighter charm all that comes my way ball child in open pram you think i only look and you too slim lovers behind the tree and you old man with paper in your hand and sunlight in your hair my eyes lick at you like flames my nerves consume and when i finish with you in the pram near the tree and on the park bench i spit out small heaps of ash nothing else but in me the sights and smells and sounds shall thrive and go on and on and on in me shall sleep the baby that sat in prams and sleep and wake and smile it's toothless smile in me shall walk the lovers hand in hand and in me where else the old shall sit and feel the touch of sun in me the street lamps shall glimmer the cabaret girls cavort the wedding drums resound the eunuchs swirl colored skirts and sing sad songs of love the wounded moon and in me the dying mother with hopeful eyes shall gaze around seeking her child now grown and gone away to other towns other arms so she describes the very nature of a poet to sort of consume everything every visual thing every everything that comes her way and sort of let it out in forms of poetry you know what what makes what makes it even more uh even more great is the way you narrated it yes chitra's narration exactly yeah. yes. 
Always. Your narration is so so beautiful and so heart touching, Jitra. And I just want to do this. Yeah, I really wanted to do this for your Thank first for you. Okay, so who's next? You are next, so me. Huh? So I'll be reading out a brief intro of you. Nazri Shekhar Mitra is a best-selling author, poet, editor, and entrepreneur. Nadri's writing credits include the poetry collection Songs of Dust, the short story collection Beyond the Grey Line, and the novel Letters of Night. Niladri has also contributed articles to various publications and has written columns for several top websites. Apart from being a writer, Niladri is also a professional editor and the founder of a digital platform for creative minds. In his free time, he uh, gubbers around uh, several scared poets and uh, terrifies people. Not true, yeah. but okay. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, uh, yes. When did you start writing poetry, Nilad? When I was 12. I, uh, and in those times, there used to be SMSs and I had a, my brother had a pocket hand uh, SMS book that used to come. And there was a, 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 sh a share there. Of Java, I, I don't know who it was by, but there was a share. And it was really, really, it, it, it touched me. It, it said, Apne hato ki lakiro ko kya dekhti ho zalim. So it's somehow it touched me and I thought I'll write something. So I, at night I wrote a four line share. I showed it to my brother. He said, good, but room for improvement. And I just started writing. So I started with share. I went into poetry and then into other stuff. So I've been writing poetry for 18 years now, a long time. And how many have you written till now? Um, I think... In total, in Hindi and English, more than 500. Um, I think I have 200, 250 <laughs> shares, 100 poems in Hindi and about 250 in English. So that brings it to about 550 or 600 total. Yeah. Apart from 350 songs. Only? Only? Uh, yeah. Okay, man. So what have you uh, in store for Okay, so what I'm going to narrate. narrate. Uh, I'm going to narrate uh, one of my own poems. It's from my book, Songs of Dusk. Um, while publishing the book, someone had asked me that which is your favorite poem and uh, from the collection. So it's tough to say what's your favorite poem from your own book. You know, it's like every poem is like your child, you know. It's like 52 children you have. So you love all of them. But there is one that is actually my favorite poem. So I'm just going to narrate that. It's called Old Friend. So here we go. How have you been, old friend? It's been so long since I heard from you. Have you found that thing they call peace? Or has life tormented you too? I still remember us as two kids, lost in our own world, playing on the streets. It feels like we grew up way too fast. It took just a day for our childhood to become our past. Maybe we're still just two kids trying to understand what life really is. Struggling within ourselves with our desire to grow up, searching desperately for that elusive bliss. I wish we hadn't drifted apart, had made a little more effort to stay in touch. Could, he, could we have met once in a while or would that have been too much? I know times have changed. We are in the same people as we were before. But as the sky became dark and I had nowhere to go, I ended up at your door. So tell me, how have you been, my friend? It's been so long since I last saw you. Have you found somebody to love or are you lonely too? Thank you. That was you know, very heart touching, Miladri. I really don't have words. I mean, I could relate to that a lot. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. This is one of my favorite nice. poems from the book. Yeah. Same here. I mean, I made Niladri narrate this for me. <laughs> and the first time he read it, I choked up because I was going through some really personal traumatic experience. 
and that poem echoed so well i choked up and i was like from now on you are going to merit every single poem of yours <laughs> thanks i this somehow this is um, this really close to my heart i don't uh, i wrote it over one night when i was down and uh, uh i i really literally had no one to call and uh, i think i did call up someone uh, a friend and uh, he was sleeping it was really late so we spoke for about 10 minutes and then i hung, we hung up and then i sat in my balcony and i wrote this over 15 20 minutes so somehow it's it's really close to me. thank you for sharing this with us nanatri we have our next is it everybody anybody who cares to read songs of dusk <laughs> nobody does please go ahead and read the book you should <laughs> give we will songs will. of dusk to all the participants of sonia yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay done yes <laughs> So all participants Done. of Solems will get everybody the gets book. a copy of songs of uh, songs of dusk. Good, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a gabber. That's actually <laughs> like a biggest achievement of being a part of <laughs> TCC. Getting the song of dusk. <laughs> okay, then now we're, now that we're all pumped up to receive Niladri's book, let's. Meet the next poet, Hitesh Saini. Hitesh Saini is a versatile writer and the co-author of Unheard Feelings. Born in a small village of Uttar Pradesh, he completed his master's in chemistry and currently works as a teacher. He's also a fabulous artist and uh, he sings really well. And uh, he had brought his guitar along in an open mic session at TCC's Christmas party. So if you're watching this, you can check out the previous episode where you can see Hitesh singing. Uh, so Hitesh, uh, what brought you to Soul Hymns and uh, do you enjoy writing poetry? Uh, you're talking about what brought you me so in Soul Hymns. So it's you, you, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I went to the same with that. Uh, I did not say it to you, I threatened you. Okay, okay, whatever it is. <laughs> when, uh, I, I was like, I'm not a English poems are not my thing. I'm not a poet of English poems. And uh, <clears throat> see, it's good. I just sat and wrote it. Okay. Uh, first of all, I have a request to the Khoni that please, please, please compose my songs. I'm, I'm going to send to you. <laughs> yes. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> okay. So... What I love about poems, uh, they are not are just words. They are feelings. They are emotions. Uh, in every poem you write, you wrote, or you're gonna write, you just write your emotions. And that I felt about my poems, and every poem you write is all about yourself. Not about others. Not about things. Not it's all about yourself. That that's why I love poetry. And uh, I'm not a poet, I can say. I, uh, my journey about writing is, uh, uh, I was a boy, I was a dreamy boy who lives in a fantasy world of its own. And uh, I, I made out some stories like animation movies, like uh, 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 ant and red ant and black ants just fighting for their grace and love and more and uh, many many stories I made that but that uh, just ends and I draw them even my draw art is not good and I just draw some characters of my stories but that's just left and um, my parents get me to take science I'm not a science person okay but I manage it Okay, then in my 11th, I wrote poems. And uh, I was going to share like, with us today, Hitesh, one of your own poems. Uh, it can be in Hindi also, uh, doesn't have to be in English. You can recite your own poem or anything that you've written or uh, some of your favorite poems. 
okay actually i don't have english poems in my diary so i have only hindi poems so yeah that's okay. perfectly okay please do go ahead i i got hindi poems and uh, hindi poems uh, i i i got some appreciation that i i read and i think oh my god i just wrote that okay <laughs> let's moving on okay so please do read out yeah and it is the the poem i was i'm going to narrate today is my first poem that i let out from my diary in my first year of graduation so uh, it's about me and my every poem is about me like i said okay so it's uh, the title is kuch khwab adhure se maybe you might all guys you might relate or maybe not i don't know but it's related to please do go ahead so he <laughs> manzil nazar nahi aati kinara dikh nahi pata I, I, first of all i am i'm gonna say it's a immature immature there's immature nothing poem. immature in poetry i believe it's that every poem is special poem. every poem uh, can Which strike a chord okay so manzil nazar nahi aati kinara dikh nahi pata well the starting two lines were wonderful bahav hai tez darya ka sahara dikh nahi pata aankhon se aankhon se chhalak hi jate hain jazbat adhure se dilon mein pal hi jate hain kuch khwab adhure se junu to hai kuch kar guzar jane ka junu to hai kuch kar guzar jane ka दिलों को छूते हुए स्वर गुनगुनाने का पर महसूस होता है मुझे पर महसूस होता है मुझे कि करता हूं मैं सिर्फ आगाज अधूरे से दिलों में पल ही जाते हैं कुछ ख्वाब अधूरे से ख्वाबों की दुनिया में जीना मुझे अच्छा भी लगता है ख्वाबों की दुनिया में जीना मुझे अच्छा भी लगता है हर एक ख्वाब मुझे मेरा सच्चा भी लगता है सहम जाता हूं मैं सहम जाता हूं मैं जब कभी सोचता हूं कि टूट ना जाए मेरे सपने सुनहरे से दिलों में पल ही जाते हैं कुछ ख्वाब अधूरे से एंड वन मोर स्टेंजा इट्स फनी एक्चुअली दिलों की बात को लेकर परेशान हो मैं जाता हूं दिलों की बात को लेकर परेशान हो मैं जाता हूं ख्वाबों की दुनिया में अक्सर खो मैं जाता हूं तनहाइया भी महसूस होती हैं दिल को मगर तनहाइया भी महसूस होती हैं दिल को मगर याद आते हैं जो मिले थे मुझे परवाज दूरे से दिलों में पल ही जाते हैं कुछ ख्वाब अधूरे से थैंक यू uh fresh breath of air we have been discussing english poetry and then, and then hitesh comes up with something like this uh, even prabhupad uh, uh, has uh, you know his collection is bilingual so he you will find lots of hindi poetry in his uh, book also <laughs> i've been seeing that he's you know listening to this and i'm like yeah i can write hindi poetry too just like to just like to add yeah hitesh first of all amazing uh that's not Thanks. immature at all and uh, talking of uh, bilingual books uh, i have a little book coming out next month and uh, i wanted it to be only english but then chitra again as she does as uh, um hitesh said threatened me and now it's going to be bilingual as well so i'm going to put in my hindi poems there as well good okay nice and i think we should have a, a anthology bilingual anthology too because uh, we have one got some thing. amazing yes. poets uh, who write in hindi can, can if, I... if nobody if nobody uh, beats me up can i narrate a hindi poem <laughs> uh, actually, I, wait, wait wait here i i just uh, saw one stand has left <laughs> and i can oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> go ahead go ahead <laughs> and it's and it's the final part of the poem <laughs> okay khatam nahi hua and uh, <laughs> it's last it's last mm-hmm. oh unchaiyon ko chhu kar dikhaunga main ek din matlab just self appreciation unchaiyon ko chhu kar dikhaunga main ek din 
लोगों की नजरों में चढ़ जाऊंगा मैं एक दिन हौसला और बुलंद हो जाता है मेरा हौसला और बुलंद हो जाता है मेरा जब अक्सर होते हैं मुझे ये आभास अधूरे से दिलों में चल पल ही जाते हैं कुछ ख्वाब अधूरे से कोई बहुत ही जज्बाती फिल्म के आखिर में जो एक मोनोलॉग टाइप की पोएट्री होती है ना इट वॉज लिटरली लाइक दैट ऐसे अच्छा सा कोई म्यूजिक चल रहा है ऑडियंस आर इंट्रोस्पेक्टिंग रिफ्लेक्टिंग अबाउट दी एंटायर मूवी और ये पोएट्री चल रही है इस इस किस्म की पोएट्री थी बहुत ही बहुत ही लाजवाब बहुत लाजवाब थैंक यू थैंक यू आई वुड से आई थिंक इट्स एवरी ड्रीमर फॉर पुटिंग हिम इन द लास्ट सो दैट ही कुड यू नो कंक्लूड दिस एंटायर सेशन हिज पोएट्री इज एक्चुअली अ कंक्लूजन ऑफ आवर्स लाइक आवर ऑल व्हाट आर वी टॉक्ड अबाउट इट्स ब्यूटीफुल Yes, but but the conclusion would come from Miss Nidhi Palikar. Uh, do you want to? I am waiting for Nidhi. that. Actually, <laughs> do you want to go ahead with your Hindi uh, poem now, Naladi, or after Nidhi is done? Um, if in if it's it's if it's okay now, uh, Nidhi, yes, I want Nidhi do. to be the yeah, last please. to conclude. Yeah, yeah, please do. Um, okay, okay. First of all, like um, I'd say. Uh, Hitesh, one line for you. It's तुम और तुम्हारे ख्वाब चार चांद लगा गए इस PCC के प्री लॉन्च सोल हिंस की एंथोलॉजी पार्टी को माई गॉड थैंक यू थैंक यू साहुर हाजी गब्बर भी प्लीज प्रोसीड ओके सुलगती धूप में थोड़ी सी छाव मांगी तो शाखों ने भी नकार दिया दर दर भटके थोड़ी सी खुशी के लिए मगर हर दर से लोगों ने निकाल दिया दोष हमारा था या कसूर किसी और का इस बात का फैसला कौन करे तैरना सिखाया नहीं मगर दरिये में उतार दिया जिम्मेदारियां तो रख दी कांधों पे पर कांधा ना दिया सर रखने के लिए टूटे घड़ा दे दिया तोहफे में पानी से भर रखने के लिए हमने तो सारी जिंदगी ना इंसाफियों में ही गुजार दिया तैर न सिखाया नहीं मगर दरिये में उतार दिया एक बार मोहब्बत क्या कर ली उम्र भर पछताते रहे जिंदगी ने अपनाया नहीं और मौत से भी ठोकर खाते रहे उसकी यादों की नौकरी जो की तो गम का उसने पगार दिया तैर न सिखाया नहीं मगर दरिये में उतार दिया गुना है तो मेरी साफ दिखी मगर वजह उनकी धुंडी रह गई लड़ते रहे तूफानों से इधर और मासूमियत उधर बाढ़ में बह गई वक्त था ही कहा किसी के पास जो एक बल एक जो एक पल ठहर के सोचता के खिला भी ना था जो फूल उसको पैरों के नीचे किसने कुचाल दिया तैरना सिखाया नहीं मगर दरिये में उतार दिया I loved the first lines. Wow, they were awesome. Thank you. Niladri writes in Bengali also, I think. Hmm. <laughs> Niladri writes in Bengali also, I think. So. <laughs> um. No, I can't. That's I'm 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 really uh ashamed to say that being a Bengali, I can't write in Bengali. I have difficulty reading Bengali also. So you should please write in Bengali. Please, please do. I would love to read it. Please. <laughs> Someday. You were in Beng. You were in. Uh, were in Bengal, no? Born yes. and brought up. Born yes, and brought yes. up. Then yes. you should. You should try it. <laughs> Bengali. Same same Niladri. Write in Bengali. <laughs> <laughs> and when you finally become a bengali poet and when someone asks you what sparked in you the inspiration to write in bengali cite usha shridharan she was the first one to tell me to write in <laughs> to write in bengali. there is there is you can translate niladri you can translate it in bengali hmm. <laughs> 
poems your own poems should be translated in bengali i i, I have written one bengali song by the way yeah you can say it <laughs> chitra, chitra knows that i have written one bengali song that i'm really really embarrassed about please don't <laughs> why embarrassing let let's know it were how you are written <laughs> just go for it mm no no not that that's for some other day <laughs> okay nidhi the last person let me last but not the least just share my screen nidhi parlekar is a pune based professional writer and editor her collection of hindi poetry nistar was published in 2020 and her write ups have been published in various anthologies she is currently in the process of writing her first fiction novel she holds both her bachelor's and master's degree in english literature you can generally find nidhi at her favorite book cafe either reading writing or engaging in conversations about art and nidhi is also uh, the so editor much. and the writer nice. of the that's very nice that's very nice nidhi nidhi is the soul of soul hymns oh please okay. <laughs> yes that's true right chitra great to that <laughs> so how does it feel nidhi to be the soul of solems <laughs> i can't tell you how it feels to be the soul of solems because the soul of solems is a collection of all of our poetry and the emotions that we have put into it it just feels great to be a part of the same book as all of you talented poets and niladri shekhar mitra and chitna padmana i mean i have been fan girling over these two since the past two years and now i get to be in the same book as the two of them which is brilliant <laughs> and i started writing at a really young age but it was not poetry uh, all of the poems that i read in school were constrained there was a rhythm there was a rhyme that i had to follow and like neerat said there was this structure i it felt very chained up and then i started reading different kinds of poetry during my bachelor's and my masters and i realized that even if there is a lack of structure a poetry a, a piece of poetry can stand very well on its own just with the power of the words that it includes so that is how my writing journey started and nistar i wrote it because i had a muse which was torturing me inside it was an artist wanting to let go of the muse and that is literally what nistar means it means letting go it, it means liberation and now i am writing on my first fictional novel which hopefully will finish this year <laughs> what are you going to narrate for us today kidi uh, because there have been so many mentions of kamla das and because soul hymns has so many beautiful confessional poems written by everyone i would like to narrate a confession poet poem of my own which is called the soul's brag uh it has a quotation by an author so you will know when it comes <laughs> okay. i read das plath and dickinson again and again how death is a vortex a bee a calling i tie myself to them with strings that might just be non existent childhood art womanhood words 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 the recluse poet is the idea plagued artist a soul lost too early a soul escaped too soon the silent screams the desire to be heard to open the pandora's box and let out the chaos within language never dies in her mouth plot lost structure broken self missing all that's left words 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 do these strings exist do they not the mind always the mind lost broken found fixable the question echoes even now am i am i Emma, thank you. That was great. And the narration was like just flowing. It was awesome. Thank you so much, Ida. I'm not yes, going to say anything because I don't have any words. 
Yeah, very beautiful. You did not publish this one in the Nistar? No, Nistar is a collection of Hindi poems. Hindi poems. So. Why you did not? Oh my God. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. This should have been published. This Which is really, means, really beautiful. Which means you need to know like about it. it. Also, speaking a little about Nistar, I think it's through Nistar that I know Nidhi. I, I remember I read that and I texted her. Um, I had spoken to her only once or twice before and they texted her saying that uh, I'm a fan of this book and I'm a fan of your poetry. So. Thank you so much. Nidhi. It was the same thing with me. I picked mm. up Nidhi's Nistar and then I texted her. Oh my God, I'm in love with your poetry book. And then I made an Insta story and I reviewed it. It was... It was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, Chitra. It means a lot coming from the two of you. <laughs> oh, for Hindi also. Hindi poem. Uh, no, I Nidhi. won't be narrating my <laughs> Hindi poem right now. I'm really sorry. Uh, some other day, for sure. <laughs> I hope that our, more of our sessions like Soul Hymns book launch party will be happening soon. And I hope that Niradri and Chitra arrange something really soon. We will. Nidhi, your uh, English poems need another book now. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank Before you. bringing out your novel, you should bring out a poetry collection. Thank you, Niradri. If I do, no. I will bother you about it. I mean, no there is there is no one else that I would go to. I would be like, Niladri, 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 Likna, Likna. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay guys this has been a lovely evening and uh, I've enjoyed myself a lot and uh, it was great listening to you all and I'm sure everyone who's watching this uh, would relate to any one of the poems that we have narrated today recited today would have definitely uh, brought out the urge in other aspiring poets to write more, to submit more, to challenge themselves to different forms of poetry. And uh, now that you know more about the talented poets of uh, Soul Hymns, uh, I would uh, request all of you who are watching this, please do go get a copy of Soul Hymns. We will be announcing uh, the release date on all our social media platforms. Don't miss out on this book because uh, this is going to be epic. It's going to be heart touching and uh, of course, inspiring. So please do like, share and comment. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done already because uh, we are going to host so many more interesting sessions. And also you're going to know about each of our talented poets in detail. Uh, in the following weeks, we are going to be uploading lots of video introductions and we are going to host live sessions. And uh, so please stay tuned for all those episodes and uh, keep following the Creative Circle official across all our social media handles. So bye-bye everyone and stay tuned for more updates on Soul Hips.